What we looked at is uh, amongst teens with chronic pain or uh, pain conditions that have been going on a long time, uh, we look for predictors that they would stay on uh, opioid pain medications. Providers should be aware that people with uh, mental health disorders, and in our study um, most of them were depression and anxiety, uh, that people with those disorders are at increased risk for long-term opioid use. Um, and uh, what that means is getting more than 90 days of opiates, um, and that's not something we would recommend. Um, and so knowing that certain populations of patients may be at higher risk, what providers can do is, is look for it ahead of time and also make sure that the supports are in place for those patients so that issues like depression and anxiety are being addressed. This link that we see in the study between depression and anxiety um, and uh, long-term treatment with opiates is something that we're also seeing in clinics. Um, the other piece of that is that depression and anxiety tend to run in families, and we also see that uh, long-term use of opioid medications can often uh, occur within multiple generations of the same family. And so knowing that ahead of time, uh, parents um, can ask providers to be sure that um, their, their teens are screened before they're started on medications. Um, they can be in tune to their kids when they're on this treatment and if they have concerns, really advocate for them with the provider to look to make sure that we're not missing depression or anxiety. So we, what we don't want to do is just put a band-aid on pain. We know that um, that depression and anxiety do occur secondary to pain, but also pain can um, be worsened when depression and anxiety are present or it can it can feel worse when they're present